three. Just three more wins, and the Spurs will win the NBA crown. Welcome to the Spurs Roundtable. And, of course, all talk about San Antonio is LeBron. Yes, <laughs> LeBron and his cramping. Um, thanks again for watching this episode of the Spurs Roundtable. I am Jeff Garcia, and alongside of me is... Aaron Prine, and if you know any difference, he did cut his lot. <laughs> okay, and of course, Chelsea Torres. Uh, so, you know, despite the fact that the Spurs got the game one victory convincingly, 15 points, everything is being focused on LeBron and his cramp. And let's just face it, there's been LeBroning, he's been pretty much skewered in the media. Yeah, is, it, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it fair? Chelsea? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily fair, uh, especially since the Spurs were the ones that won. But right I don't know. It's because it's LeBron. That's the only reason why he's all over social media. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's it wasn't even the fact that he got the cramp. I understand a lot of players get cramps and you can't move. I think what made it really funny is the fact that he was carried off the court. It, it was the, the drama, the dirt mm -hmm. uh, that it was surrounded by. But you know, Aaron, you know what came out right away after that cramp incident was well, uh, Mag uh, Michael Jordan played with the flu. Uh, Kobe Bryant played with a busted Achilles. Mono Ginobili played with a broken elbow in the postseason. Yeah. He got a lot of comparison to these type of players. Yeah, and it's because, like she said, that it, he is LeBron. And, you know, if Michael Jordan was in this era, he would just be skewered, um, considering everything that we know about him now. But a lot of, what a lot of people don't understand about cramps, it, it's almost like paralysis. Mm -hmm. It just shuts your body down. There's, you're, you're dehydrated. It's pulled all the, the water out of your muscles. It's got to pull it from somewhere. Right. They, they give it to the most important areas like your brain and the rest of your organs. So, um, you know, it's, he's played sick. He's played through a lot of other, right. other injuries. But all athletes will jump out and say, hey, cramps are not a, a light thing. Right. Well, you, you know, the funny thing about it, though, is that, you know, a lot of it probably lent to the fact that the AC in the 18-seater shut down. And I'm talking about 90 plus degrees. Now, I was there in uh, press row, and it wasn't until about close to halftime where I started noticing something. I said, Something's not right. I'm like, why am I sweating a lot? <laughs> and I turned to uh, another Project Spurs writer, and he said, No, the AC went out. So I look, and the entire stadium is just fanning themselves, fanning themselves. There were media in full on suits, tie, jacket, the works, taking off their jackets. So when the game's over, we go down to the tunnel. It is just even worse. It wasn't just simply the bowl area, the arena area. It was the entire AT&T Center. The, the, the media scrums were just horrible. P media was just going in, getting quotes, and getting out. It was to the point they just laid out uh, water bottles, uh, soda, something. They just sort of just have at it go. It was just really unbearable. Well, I was there with you guys in Seoul. I was watching from home and yeah. just... To feel your guys' pain, I raised my AC up to 78. Oh, well, I appreciate so. that. <laughs> well, well, the good news here, the AC is working right now, so we're, we're good. Uh, uh, but, yeah, I mean, it was just really unbearable. But, you know, a lot of now they're saying, well, maybe the Spurs did it on purpose. Jason yeah. Terry came out uh, today saying, oh, the Spurs did it uh, on purpose. But, you know, hey, you know what? It happened, it happened. You know, it's not the first time something happened at the AT&T Center. Bats snakes and who could forget the infamous alamo dome water cannon so something always goes wrong in uh, uh of course during the worst possible times the playoffs but speaking of the po the finals uh game one it's a wrap spurs got the victory convincingly what were some of your general thoughts about the game one win i don't think there's anything that can carry over from game one to game two just because the, the teams didn't almost play for a week and plus the incident with the ac being out and I mean, between the two teams, there were 41 turnovers that made up for 55 points between the two teams. It was just ugly ball, and a lot of it, the defense... Was it really ugly ball? I mean, I don't, I don't think it was, was really ugly. The defense and the offense was very inconsistent through both teams. For, on both sides? On both teams. On both sides of the floor, there were a lot of passes uh, that were the, to the, the other jerseys that just didn't make any sense from both teams. The third quarter was pretty much on the Spurs. I mean, they didn't look like the, what we saw right. in that first half. But as a whole, the Spurs played a generally a pretty good game. Both teams they played yeah. generally well, but they kept making a lot of mental mistakes on both sides. And then it just, it finally just kind of snowballed on the heat once LeBron just went out. Right. Uh, it was kind of close for a while, especially that second half. The heat came back. They took the lead. They took a five, seven point lead. Mm -hmm. I was a little nervous. Were you? Uh, at first, I was. But after a while, you, 
It really didn't make any difference to me because once we got into the fourth, especially towards the end of the third, when Thiago was really hitting the shots, he was getting those rebounds, then you know that, okay, if he can get that momentum going, if he can not look as intimidated or not seem as intimidated, then the Spurs can keep on going. Now, once we got into the fourth quarter, uh, obviously the Spurs were able to come through with that 31-9 run. However, I do think, I kind of agree with Aaron a little bit. You know, the first half of the game, especially if you look at the stats of the, or I guess the play-by-play -play of the first quarter, the first, like, five minutes, the Spurs were turning over shots. You know, they were or turning over passes. They weren't mm -hmm. making some shots. And the Heat already were right. up quite a bit. And I feel like that was probably their biggest time to get that lead right. if they had the chance to. Well, you, you know, looking at this, something, you know, what would you say went, went right? Obviously, they got the win. That went right. But, you know, as a whole, I think one thing that stood out for me was Danny Green. He played subpar basketball for most of the game. Uh, Tony Parker uh, spoke to the media afterwards and said he was really yelling, getting in his face to come on, we need him. And he just erupted in the second half, uh, pretty much helped the Spurs keep Miami Heat at bay. What, did you, what else did you like about game one? Well, that the fact that Tim Duncan was solid as always and that they could go to, go to him to rely on him because about everybody else just couldn't put one foot in front of the other. And he had a really great performance, and he was just that steady anchor for them right. until the, the team could kind of get it going again. All right, what did you like about Game 1? Um, well, what I found that was really interesting, it seemed like in the first half, the Heat were collapsing more on our big guys. You could tell they obviously watched the way that, they, that the Spurs play. Um, they noticed the big-on-big -big passing, and so they did their best to go to the paint and really collapse on us. Right. However, the Spurs came back and made the adjustments, and they were able to get the, the ball to the outside shooters, right. which obviously helped with Danny Green making those threes. Right. Yeah, it was definitely the, the penetration of the kickouts, mm -hmm. penetration kickout. I was in the locker room at the Miami Heat, and I, th I believe I spoke with uh, Norris Cole, and he just said that's what did it to them, the fact that the guards were penetrating mm -hmm. and collapsing the defense and the kickout. So definitely Miami's going to be looking at that heading into game two. But, you know, there are also things that probably could have gone wrong. Uh, I think the turnovers, 20-plus yeah. turnovers. 23. 23. Yeah, uh, you know, is that just a blip on the radar, or is that something to be concerned about heading into game two? No, go ahead. <laughs> I, I think that we, we've seen this in the past where the Spurs are, are coming off a long break. It takes mm -hmm. them a while to just kind of get it going again. It's a big difference playing practice or scrimmage against your own teammates right. than it is playing against the Miami Heat. I mean, there's a lot of similarities between the two teams. They're both great passing right. teams. They're both aggressive. And um, I think that's you're going to see that cleaned up right. from both sides going into game two. Right. Well, speaking of game two, Chelsea, what would, as, you know, obviously you clean up the ball, don't turn it over, but what would you like to see the Spurs do differently in game two to secure a 2-0 lead? Um, I would like to see, as what we talked about, maybe more of the outside shooting. Now, again, I have a feeling that he are going to come back and try to guard that as much as possible. But I do have to say, even if LeBron was in the game, I do think that he probably wouldn't have been able to right. contest those shots. Right. So as long as we keep the shooting more on the outside, um, Boris Diaw had an immaculate game. It doesn't mm -hmm. show on the stats, but the fact that he was able to make those, I mean, I don't know if you saw, but some of those behind, right. like Chris Bosh's exactly. uh, back, you know, those passes really help the right. Spurs, and that's what makes the, the game. Right. Well, well, for me, I'd like to see Kawhi Leonard step up a little yes. bit more. He had a very subpar game. He did. I think the Spurs definitely need him. I, I get it. He's focused on LeBron. You know, his mind's going to be very occupied, and it's trying to shut him down, but we need him on the offensive end as well as the defensive end. But, you know, those are our thoughts heading into game two. But so make sure to go out to ProjectSpurs.com and leave your thoughts on game one. If you're there at, for game one and experience the heat, not Miami, the, the, the heat heat, <laughs> the AC busting, uh, please uh, leave us your uh, experiences as well. But, and also don't forget to go to News 4 San Antonio and as well as uh, Fox 29 San Antonio. But for Chelsea Torres, Aaron Prine, I am Jeff Garcia. Thanks again for watching this episode of the Spurs Roundtable. It was hot. I can only imagine. I'm talking hot. You know, I heard Pat Riley was in a full suit yeah. and drinking coffee. Yeah.